Oh, boys and girls, we've decided to do a vlogcast. Sit down, me and Andy have decided to sit down and give you a vlogcast, which you've all been asking for. Um, week five, is it? <laughs> we did several takes of this. We did. Mm. Um, we did indeed. And uh, we had a script. Just a minute. Mic trigger, mic lock, button is on. Double tap to lock mic off. Mic lock, mic, mic, mic lock, button is on. Okay, so reading from my script then. Talk about CD collection. Um, so I'm meant to talk about Cradle of Filth at this point, aren't I? <laughs> um, and mention that the CD was a bonus CD. The Midian album um, was a bonus CD. I don't know if... I, I can't... I think it came from Amazon, I think. Um, and I got it as a present, but <clears throat> it's got two extra bonus tracks on it. Um, so yeah, I think you can get the bonus track edition from quite a lot of places now, but yeah, that's the bonus track edition of um, Cradle of Filth. Just going off the script a moment here, um, my coronavirus jab, which I had on Sunday, has started to take effect um, as I'm recording this. Not when I put it out because it'll be, it's pre-recorded this, but um, I'm getting the I'm getting the side effects as you would with the flu jab really, but just a bit more, you know, cold like symptoms, so headache, sniffles, um, sore arm, sore arm. I keep pulling it where I had my jab. <laughs> I did. Do you know when I have my flu jab? I've had the um, overtiredness, um, oh crumbs, bit of headache, um, and the, the overtiredness is just coming and going with, with flows, with waves. It's like overtiredness. Mm. And I feel it in my leg. Um, Overactive legs, I forgot what they call it. Mm. Um, anything with me that's overactive is a complete ha ha. Um, because, yeah, but I feel a bit jittery. Um, as you do, because it's trying to get your system. So I'll be hyperactive one minute and then I'll be. Uh, to the next, you know. But I've been, I've been working against the wind. If uh, if one's a better word, you know, I've been trying to keep myself going. If uh, you know, trying to tell myself that it is the side effects of the jab, and you know, I don't really feel ill. Um, because if I do know that, I'll be like, oh shit, you know, I need to go to bed. <laughs> um. Which is not, but it's like Charles said yesterday that he had a headache and you know stuff with it, sore arm, all the all the stuff you get. But it's not, you know, the side effects of the jab are not COVID nineteen. It's um, it's gonna have that. But for some reason, I'm getting this weird taste from the jab. Mm. Really weird taste. Um. So I don't know where that's coming from, but hey, it's in my system. What the F can I do? <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, it's one of those things, but 
you know, I can eat and drink, which is one of the things that I thought, oh, crumbs, I'm not going to be able to eat and drink. But, um, I need to sleep it off. Um, and last night was really rough. I, I went to bed at my usual time. <laughs> this is off the script. I know, but we'll get back to the script in a minute. Um, we have got a script today, which we don't normally have. It's just, I've written a few things down to kind of keep pointers, um, make sure the video's not too long. And um, Andy, you've got a script as well, haven't you? No. No? Please, you want to do a script. It was. Um, but, um, yeah. I've got some boring stuff coming in this vlog as well, in this vlog cast. Yeah. We got some. Uh, yeah. When I stretch it. <laughs> I'm gonna stretch it. I know it hurts right there. Right there. Mm. Oh yeah. I can feel it's fighting against me. I can really, really feel this fighting against me. You know? Mm. I can really feel it working, working its voodoo. <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is gonna be more worse than the flu jab. Um, Cause it's, it's fighting, it's a beast, it's a beast. But, um, I can taste the jab. I can taste it, I can taste it, it's weird. Um, you've not lost your taste. No, I haven't. I've not lost my taste at all. Um, I can still taste, I can still smell. Um, and the, you can hear the croaky voice coming in. You know, the headache. I'm just all over the place, I'm tired one minute, then I'm like, whoa, I'm hell, you know? I'm like, energetic the next. So I've done a bit of work, I've worked on a spreadsheet, I've done some stuff, and um, but I couldn't, I couldn't do a workout or anything. Mm. I couldn't do, I couldn't sit here and write my book. Um, my brain's just liquidized. I just, I'm just trying to have a chill day now. I'm, I just want a lazy afternoon. So I want. Um, it didn't hit me. Um, it didn't hit me till I came back. Because I came back out. I came back, and I was like, oh, I'm all right, you know. You know, I'm all right. Um, and then, went upstairs, I was all right. Went, and I just felt, I just felt drowsy. You know, come lunchtime, I just felt really drowsy. I thought, this bitch is working its magic, working its voodoo, mm. you know. And, uh, like, I can smell fine, you know, I can taste fine. I've had, I've had a coffee, I've had a couple of biscuits this afternoon. I'm not going to lie about that, mm. you know, so it's not that I don't want to eat or drink. Um, it's messing around with me being tired and not tired, you know, um, so I just, I get overactive and then I just get underactive and then I'm just like, Arr. just, just, just leave me alone. Just, <laughs> you know, but I don't want to take, I'm not going to take a paracetamol even to help me sleep. I'm going to have, even if I have to have another rough night, Arr. but last night I had a rough night because I had a pie on top of beer. Mm. But I went to bed because I was I had a bit of I had a couple of things on my mind to you know as you do I have a couple of things on my mind and I was thinking about 
things as you do. And uh, I was listening to my audio book and I fell asleep for a wait, I don't know. Anyway, I woke up with the audio book was still on play and I thought, yeah. Um, so I paused that and then I went to sleep. And then suddenly I woke up with this weird feeling in my throat. There was a crumb which I hadn't let digest properly leapt up in my throat and it was bouncing up and down. I felt this weird feeling. What? Go and do that again. Feeling. And um, I thought, this is it. And I had to go to the bathroom anyway for a pee. So I went to the bathroom. As you do, nothing came up. I thought, okay. So I coughed on that. And I went to bed. Slept a little bit. Had a couple of weird dreams. Woke up. Went to the loo. Had my breakfast. And I was all jittery. And then I went, had my jab and the rest of it. So I'm just thinking, do you know what? What's another rough night, you know? Mm. I'll just close my eyes and try and, if even if I do thrash about, because I have a few nights where I'm, you know, fighting the bed, mm. fighting the bed covers. And uh, I, I, I thrash about a lot. It's just, it's just me, you know? I'm either hot or not, or comfortable, or, you know, I want to be under the covers one minute, then I won't be next, and, and then I'll try and weight myself down with the covers, then I'm fighting with me, um, me comfort toys, um, oh yeah, because you've got your teddies, haven't you? Yeah, so I'm fighting with them, um, Usually, it's not a fun fight. They usually lose the fight. They usually get. I'm. I'm usually woke up with either there's two teddies on top of me, and then the next minute I'll be on top of a teddy or something, and then there'll be a couple of teddies underneath me. And it's just like pillows are spread out everywhere. <laughs> you push me sometimes. Don't. Yeah. You should push me back. You should. Grab a pillow and whack me over there or something. <laughs> I'm worried about waking you. Do you remember that time I kicked you in bed? I was drunk. Mm. Yeah. I, I was drunk and I came back from my 30th. It was about 2 or 3 in the morning or something, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um... I thought I kicked the wall and I hadn't. I kicked you. Yeah. I kicked... You was like... Andy, stop the room from spinning. I know, and uh, we couldn't. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring this back to the script. Um, so we were talking about the COVID jab. I mean, what's what's another rough night? Seriously, like as you can tell at the moment, I was like, woo, hi, and I'll, I'll be back down low later on. But I'll feel fine. But it's my legs. I can feel it in my legs. My legs are bloody sore. I feel like I've done a. I feel like I've done a workout. Mm. You know, I feel like I've done done like a two hour workout or something. But I really, really feel it in my body. Really, really feel it. Is it is that what it's meant to do? Mm. You know, work its magic. Oh. But um, like I said, I mean it's not it's not changing my appetite because <laughs> usually when I have a cold, when I have a bad cold, um, I you know I I eat fine anyway. Um, it's usually when I have a headache, I don't eat fine properly. Um, but I haven't had a bad headache for a while, and it's usually in the summer. And it's usually when I do like look at the light and things, but um, I've got my sunglasses at home for if I have a bad headache attack. Mm. So I haven't had one for a while, but if I do, I'll just wear dark glasses all day. I've got some really dark glasses, which a friend of mine gave me, so I'll wear them blackout glasses. Mm. I'll just be wearing them all day. I've got them for a project actually, which I'm working on. 
But um, yeah. So I could actually drum with this arm. It's not not felt that bad. Um, you know, it's not like when you had your, your TB jab. Oh boy, I remember when that was a that was a that was a devil. The TB jab, right? I had it in my left arm. I can even remember where it was. I think it was there. Where it was? It was right there. And, um, oh boy. I remember knocking it a few times and oh, I said a few cursed words. Mm. But, um, you know? And like the TB jab, I hardly felt the TB jab. Hardly felt this one. It was just a little scratch across the arm, you know. And I was like, have you done that? She's like, yeah. She's like, it's done. And um, she just wiped my arm because there was a wee bit of blood from the thing, but from the needle. Yeah. It was a dead sharp needle, but hey ho. Hmm. It's uh, drew a bit of blood from the thing, but I didn't worry me in the slightest. Mm. You know, what's a bit of blood? Yeah, you know. Um, this arm, actually, this right arm's lost more blood than... Because <laughs> I've had two blood tests on this, on this same arm. Anyway, what were we talking about? CD collections. CD collections. In fact, actually, I'm going to go boring for a minute. Two notifications. Amino. Three minutes ago. MR creep. Mic trigger. Mic lock. Button. Is on. Got mic. 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 Mic trick. Mic lock. Button. Is on. So, um, I'm gonna go a bit serious from here. The channel's having um a change. I'm still doing the temp radio stuff. Um, we're no longer mind mob. The channel name might change to. Uh, it might change to. Uh, my big box or something like that I don't know um, it might not change but just I don't know um, also I'm doing Tampa radio videos I'm doing pretend to play videos I'm doing these vlog casts every week um, and that's all uh, that's all I'm doing there's uh, Weekly vlogs we can't do at the moment. There's going to be a few behind the scenes videos, which I'm doing. Uh, one where I did my exercise around town. Um, I might not do that as a behind the scenes video. I might just do that, show that off and be done with it because it's, um, it's one of them videos, isn't it? That we need to show. Um, we're in what they call a national lockdown so you know be careful we have to be careful what we can vlog we can't just go out and go on the road and do some nice show and tell of a day out or something you know or holiday stuff I mean that's not what I do anyway but I've done all the cheesy stuff now I can do all the proper stuff. I can sit down and I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. I can talk about my Asperger's syndrome diagnosis, which um, I've got two story uh, storytelling videos of that. Um, there's going to be a book next year called The Invisible Kid, which I've started. Um, I started structuring that because it's starting from fifteen. Um, in fact, I'll give you an extract of what it sounds like. So, um, 15, I was on, I was on my way home from school that day. Um, I remembered everything was all red and rosy. And the next day I had a day off, um, from my mum, I think. Instagram. 
had a, a day off and my mummy said to me hey Stephen um, we're going to the doc you're going to the doctors tomorrow and I thought woo whoopie doo I can stay at home don't have to go to school or whatever um, so I got up early um, played with my Star Wars toys I had this routine where I'd get up play with my Star Wars toys play with my cassette recorder and then go downstairs whatever um, and if I had a day off school I'd get up super early to watch uh, my you know watch whatever shows that were on on television because I had my own television in my room and I'd get up super early to watch I think Channel 4 had uh, some learning programs on anyway I went to the doctor and they said we're not normal doctors we're not the ones that go down your throat and all this business we're special doctors <laughs> so um, they took me off into one room and mummy was in another room and that's all you're getting from that I've done a story tell story time video explaining all this but it's different um, another extract from the book staying with school um, so I'd had my Asperger's diagnosis which was just a piece of paper but um, and we told everyone and they didn't believe us the people on my on my dad's side didn't you know it was like divorced parents of course um, a real dad and a real mummy and a stepdad and everything um, just to paint the picture um, so um, obviously they did you know disbelief and uh, so the following day I'm walking down the school corridor thinking why you know no one's believing me I feel like I'm alone I feel like you know where's the switch off button where I can just switch off the school day and switch on my own day where's that switch you know and where where's the um, you know and I remember going into the school assembly slumping down and I remember just turning off the assembly wandering into my own world of being a rock god on stage with a guitar and sitting on stage with a guitar and, and I'd be in the school assembly staring at the front of the chapel and um, I remember one and I remember everybody in the school got up and they were like Stephen? I was like, what? Assembly's over. I was like, what? And I just got up and left the chapel. But, um, you know, I remember it was, um, and then I went into Angie McManus's class and she was like, why did you do that? I was like, why did I do what? Not pay attention to the assembly. I was like, I was paying attention. What was it about then? I don't know. I was too busy being a rock god, miss. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Um, but that's what I'd like to have said. And I did the English lesson. And we were doing something on Joe Merrick. And I was forced to read. And I felt like throwing the book across the table. I felt like throwing the book across the table, but I didn't. And yeah. So they're the two extracts from The Invisible Kid, which isn't been done or published, but when it is, you can read all of that. You can read about the school. Mm. I've even put about the headmaster. Mr. Roberts, but I've had to change his name to somebody else. So, 
I might just call him Mr. Much or something like that in the book. <laughs> so I, I kind of know. Mr. Robbins or something, I don't know. I have to think of a name. Mr. Edwards. Mr. Edwards. Mr. I don't know. I don't know anybody called Edwards. But yeah, that day when I was taken to the front of the chapel um, for interrupting the headmaster. That's a classic story, that. Mm. That's one in the book, isn't it? It's one for the book. But it's, you know, it's through my whole school life wanting to be a rock star. And the last year of school, I got a taste of rock star. You got a taste of it. I got a taste of it. And I didn't no longer feel like being in the school band. So, that's a spoiler alert. It is. Mm. So, um, cause I was in the school band. Didn't you know? I think we had, I think we had a name for the school band. Was it something like Save Our Souls? Hmm. Yeah. But I don't think we use that name for any more. I think we must have used it once or twice. But I just remember us being the school band. We played everywhere. We played a lot of gigs. You know? Um, there's going to be a big mention about the school band in the book because that was most of school life really. Mm. Playing concerts. But anyway. Mm. Um, so I'm going to do videos about um, back to the Driving Your Ambition series, I'm going to do NLP videos, I'm going to do how-tos, they're still happening, because um, I've lost weight, it's taken me seven years to lose weight, you know, it's taken me seven years to lose it, and um, I basically feel like someone's carried me over the finish line, you know, I did do, there was one year I did do it myself. But, um, I don't know. I mean, I can have treats now, as long as I don't have too much. You know, like I have a pie twice a week mm. with my beer. Um, I have two cans of beer twice a week. But I also want to tell you that I find it easy, like, the bowels move a lot easier. Mm. I've noticed little things like that. The bowels move a lot easier. It's easy to poo. I'm not having to force a poo out. Um, you know. So going to the lavatory is probably the only thing that I've noticed out of all. Um, my sides feel a lot smaller. Mm. You know, I feel a bit of fat round, but you always gonna have a bit of fat, but. I can always feel like fat round, like less fat round the side. Um, I'm less squidgier, but I like my squidgy bits. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, but I, there's like, I'm not out of breath. Um, I'm not tired at stupid times of the day. Um, you know. I can sleep better now. I've noticed little little things like that. Not not massive, not massive things. But I don't know. And you exercise, it's easier to exercise, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little easier. It's not got any easier, but it's a little easier. In fact, I looked at my Apple Watch data and um, 
my first exercise a uh, week was 30 minutes. Whoa. No, it was 10, no, it was, it was less than that. And then I did an hour, and then I did two hours. And I can't just do like a cardio workout in 20 minutes, every machine, because I'm working like five or 10 minutes on the bike, five minutes on the cross trainer, 10 minutes on the, on the running machine. But I'm basically, what I'm doing now is the cardio workout is a warm up. So I do the bike, the cross trainer, the treadmill, and then the whatever, and then I'll come back to whatever equipment I need to work on. The treadmill is what I need to work on. Um, it is a biggie. Yeah. And you'll see like the indoor run, oh, I can work on this now. You know, my treadmill workout, I can go from, what, an hour on the treadmill to two hours on the treadmill. And from the, the two hours to three hours or whatever mm. on the treadmill. So, and you'll be doing that like in the week, right? So like, yeah, <clears throat> cause I'm working towards a marathon. So the training needs to be kind of like the workout that I do at the moment The, 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 the workout that I do at the moment is pretty light um, compared to what I, you know, what I have been doing. Um, you know, because Andy, you, you're quite thin, aren't you? Um, I am at the moment, but that's because, you know, I'm, um, I'm not eating crap every day. Yeah, excuse me, you eat McDonald's every day. Mm. Not, well, we have pastas some days. Oh, sorry, Rosemary. Rosemary's in the vlog too. Um, yeah. Oh, I've got to do a big shout out to Oscar Duke, by the way. Mm. Is that in the description? Big shout out to Oscar Duke. Yeah, big shout out to Oscar Duke, my man. Big shout out to everybody. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the weight loss is important. Um, when I, when I eat, like I enjoy my treats now. I enjoy, I remember, right? I didn't have a cake for, and I haven't had a cake for months. I don't have, this is what I'm trying to say to people. Like, yes, I would have a cake that was put in front of me. No doubt about it, mm. but, I'd rather do it like this way, you know, have my routines. A cake's not really in my routine, really. Um, a biscuit is, but not a cake. You know, a cake's like the next level in it. Mm. You know, probably a cake once a month, once or twice a month, but I'm thinking this year of saying to mummy when we get to Christmas time, because I love Christmas pudding. So I'm thinking of saying, Mummy, if we get a Christmas pudding, instead of wasting it, I'll have it for lunch instead of me porridge. Just, you know, until it's got rid. Because that, you know, Christmas pudding for lunch, you're not saying that that wouldn't fill me for the day, because it would. But a cake for lunch every day or something. Well, I actually read on somebody who had you know those, um, what do we call it? Those vanilla slices? That's all they had for lunch. It's all they had. They had those vanilla slices for lunch. They didn't eat much tea. But that's not what, that's not the road I'm going down. But, you know, I could probably go, right, I'll have, um, you know, I'll have a sweet thing for lunch instead of, you know, for lunch. Lunch, lunch for me, I'm going to say this to you now, isn't a real biggie for me. It's, um, take it or leave it. Yeah, take it or leave it. You know. Like. 
I don't know, cakes or they're a real luxury item. You know, to have to have a cake would be a freaking luxury. Mm. But I don't know. I think to have a cake every day is kind of, I don't know, when you're having sugar and too much and you, if you have like sugar all the time, like it takes, like it, it makes you, it makes you exhausted, you know. Mm. Um, it makes you exhausted. Yeah. And I mean really exhausted. You know, that's like, you when you're not satisfied, I do not want to be like that again. You know, like you eat your breakfast, you're not satisfied because, you know, you're waiting for lunch. Then lunch comes, oh, when's tea? Have me tea. And I eat like, now I have a routine you know, I have my porridge for lunch. Um, I eat my porridge with raisins for lunch. We've had, re you know, the raisins bit, that's been added. But that's an added, that to me is like an added bonus. You know, porridge with raisins. <gasps> you know. Um, the odd biscuit every now and then with a the coffee, you know. The odd, you know, and, and my pie twice. You know, I'm, I'm not under pri you know under privilege but this is what I want to hit home like before I was I felt like I don't get biscuits so I've got to have a biscuit you know mm. or um, I need a I need a I need a cake and um, I I wanted to so desperately fix it but it just didn't it just didn't work overnight And my body, my body got shocked pretty quickly. It was like, you know, because I got ill over it. I got like really ill to the point where you know, the eggy burps, they were horrible. Yeah, you know, they were sicky burps, but they were, whoa. They hurt, you know. Not only do they taste funny, but they freaking hurt. And um, I remember not eating for a whole day. I just went to the toilet and I just, it just had to come out. And then it was just like, the next day I was like, I'll have a coffee and everybody was cheering me. And I was on the scales and I just lost about three pounds in a day. But when, I, when lockdown happened and I started losing five or six pound a week. And it was like, I went from what, 12, three to 11 stone, 12. Then I went from, then I lost a whole stone in a month. I lost, I lost a, I lost that two st I lost that stone in a month. I went from, 11 stone to 10 stone 9, 10 stone, 10 stone 10, 10 stone 9, 10 stone, I went all the way down, 10 stone 3 by the summer, then before we went away I lost the two pound, I lost, um, I was 10 stone 3, so I was 10 stone 3 before I went away and I just said to Sarah, I said, I'd be happy if I lost that two pound. Came back from Centre Parks and I was 10 stone one. Yeah. Um, in two weeks, in two weeks I was 10 stone one. So I was happy to have that. And I was like, no, no more, I don't wanna lose no more. And I did, I just kept on losing. Um, where I like nine stone 10, but I haven't turned nine stone yet. Um, 
downscales would be amazing, wouldn't it? Like nine stone. Not really. Not really. I don't want to lose it anymore. But my body's like, you know, my body's just fine. Oh, my body will find its natural weight. I won't, I won't go below eight stone. That, that just won't happen. No, you know, no way would it happen. But it's like, I'm losing like rapidly. But another tip as well, I don't, you know, the big eating thing, that's unhealthy. Big, big eating is just like help, unhealth, the most unhealthy thing. It's like, I was showing off. And I'll talk more about it in detail in, in, in another video. But I was like, I can eat this, you know? And then I couldn't. It's like I was a barbecue once, and I, took, I got this sausage and that burger and everything. Oh, I couldn't eat I was just like, I nearly felt like throwing up, but it's like, and um, a friend of mine said, Stephen, it's okay if you can't eat it. And that happened a couple of times, happened at a mealtime at home once, and mummy said, it's fine if you can't eat it, don't make yourself ill. So, um, but it's like, oh, that food's gone to waste, you know? Mm. Whereas now, I mean, I probably could eat a lot of food, but it's like, well, you know, um, if I just don't want to eat a lot of food and it's like, I'll choose how much I want to eat. But I don't go, hey, look at me. I'm the big eater because that just, you know, that's where, I mean, the jam roly poly and ice cream, that finished it. That thing, it needed to happen. It needed to happen. And I'll tell you something now, right? If I had a fat kid, and I'm, I'm just talking as a parent here, I'm not talking as me, I'm talking as a parent, which is bloody hard to do, I tell you, right? If I had a kid who was fat, right? Uh, let's just say if they were if they were in their teens let's just say if they were like 18 years old and if they were fat I'd be like right okay you can eat as much as you want right because I'd want them to be ill um, I'd want them to, I'd want them to be shocked you know mm. for me it took a while to do it it takes a long time to get a food that's going to gonna do, be the last straw be the be the one that breaks the camel's back you know there has to be something it's like everything it's like everything and it's like you don't want your kid to be fat but then again you don't want you you want your kid to learn for me i learned the lesson that day that day um, I ate that jam roly poly and ice cream. I tell you, there's there's not a day goes by where I don't forget it. There's not a day goes by where I see a massive bowl of jam roly poly and ice cream. And do you know what the worst thing was, right? When I was ill. And this is another good thing. This is another thing that should happen, right? This, this should happen. Mummy got me jam roly poly and ice cream and said, do you want it? And I was like, no. And she's like, right, we'll give it to Emily. And I was like, that needed to happen. That needed to happen. It was like the best thing that happened. The best thing, I saw that jam roly poly. I, I wasn't thrown up, but it was like, I'm not gonna touch that again, do you know? And it was like, it put me off it. That's, that is something that needs to happen. It needs to happen because Otherwise, how are you gonna learn? How are you gonna get, how are you gonna stare away from that sort of thing? If I had a fat kid, right, I'd get them, I'd let them have the food, and I'd say, right, if they were ill, I'd say, right, do you want this food that you had yesterday? And if they turn it down, that's their lesson learned. That is a lesson, do you know what I mean? That is a lesson learned for everybody. Everybody needs that lesson. That's how you learn. That's how you teach someone. I was, I tell you what, I was, I was, I was like a dog. I used to, I used to eat, 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 like eat the food, like 
eat loads of. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I used to do. I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to go out, right? I used to eat biscuits and cake, loads of it. I couldn't. I didn't used to eat one biscuit. I used to have, right? I used to buy a full pack. Um, actually, we're not on camera, so I can't show you. I do have. There is a pack nearby I could have shown off. Um, but, you know, I used to buy a pack full of biscuits, right? And I used to buy the free chocolate bars in the pack. And I used to eat it. I used, to, I used to eat all that, right? And I used to go, if I went around to a friend's house or something, I used to eat a full big cake. But as like cake and ice cream. And then I'd have... Right, so I went around to my mates and I used to have... A full pack of biscuits. I used to have a full pack of biscuits. Then I'd have cake and ice cream. And then I'd have. Hold on. I used to go to the Friendship Cafe first. I used to have a full plate of biscuits there, um, which I would steal biscuits. And I'd hoard the biscuits and I'd be like, you know. And then, or cakes. I'd have about three or four cakes till I was ill. And then I went and I'd have jam roly poly and ice cream. Uh, no, I'd go up to Mike's and I'd have more biscuits. Then I'd have cake and ice cream. Then I'd have a chocolate bar. But that day I didn't have a chocolate bar. That day I just had um, I had my meal at the Mount and then I came back. I think I had something at, jam, at the um, Friendship Cafe, I can't remember. But I remember having this big bowl of jam roll pull and ice cream. One thing I can remember. And I was full to the brim. And I'm, I mean like dangerously full. Dangerously, dangerously full. And I had a bad night's sleep. I, I just... I, there's a lot of things I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all the way through what happened what, what didn't happen and I took my punishment um not lightly but you know now I'm like I don't eat that amount anymore I don't want to um you know, and it's like, I'd rather have like, after a certain amount, like, if I have my tea and I'm having like a bit of food, and like, you know, and then I'm having a pie or whatever. I just want you all to know that be, being a big eater is unhealthy. It's the most unhealthiest trend going. It is the worst trend. If there was the worst trend out there, that is one of the worst trends. And I understand diets aren't for everybody, you know? Diets aren't for everybody. And people follow diets, you know? That's good for you. But I want to be the one that's saying, get a routine going. Have this for breakfast, have that for lunch. Or don't bother with lunch. Why do you need to bother with lunch? When are you most hungriest? Are you hungry midday? Are you hungry in the morning? Are you hungry in the afternoon? Or are you hungry at night? When are you most hungriest? Some people aren't really hungry at night. Some people are hungry in the morning. Some people are more hungry towards lunch. It just depends, but just as long as you're getting your free meals in at certain times, you know? For me, lunch isn't a real biggie. I can take it or leave it at the moment because I'm hungry at breakfast. I, I wasn't very hungry at breakfast this morning, but that's another story. You know, but I did know that I thought, right, my body needs breakfast. My body needs it. Lunch doesn't really matter, but I have my porridge. Now, porridge to me is medicinal. It's like a medicine. My porridge is like you know, goes, cleans my system out. So I have my porridge. Um, you know, for tea I have whatever's, whatever's for tea, you know what I mean? And then 
the other night said me pie or whatever and it's just you know just what people need to know um but I think even though we're going off the script I think we need to have this serious talk because without a serious talk and I'm not I'm, you know you know my channel you know what, what it's like my channel the underground videos the really cool and collective stuff this ain't cool and collective this is real life man I've lived I've lived I'll tell you what I want people to live my life for the seven years you know I just I wish I could rewind back to those seven years and, and go right why why I, t you know, I look back I did actually have a dream where I was back in the Slimming World group and I'd lost I'd um, I'd lost three pound and I went up there and you know what I said to the Slim World consultant I said why am I here in the dream I said why am I here why am I paying this money when I'm doing a lot better than anybody else in this group. Did, did, did I tell you something, right? You know when people say they've got secrets in this diet, in the diet, load of rubbish. Share your knowledge, you know. Um, help the people out, you know, even if you eat slim fast shakes. People say, oh well, you know, even if it is full of sins, you know, when you're slimming well, even if it is, why can't you have, like, okay, right, Slimming World, it's, to me, to diet doesn't work for me because um, you eat, like, diets, to me, all diets, are, you eat this, but you can't eat that, okay? You can have that, but you can't have this. You gotta have this much of that, you can't have much of this, right? Every diet, right? Every diet is a routine. No matter how much you cut out, no matter how much you weigh, this or that item, if you want to lose weight, right? You know, you know the one thing that people say in a lot of diets? Um, I'm hungry. I'm hungry at all, you know, the meals don't satisfy me. Nothing's satisfying, nothing's working. Do you know why? Because you're restricted. You're restricted on what you can have, what you can eat, when you can eat it, um, how much you can have of that. And technically, Slimming World does work for so many people medically. That's why it's the biggest one out there. But Slimming World for me only works for a month. And Slimming World should only be a gateway. It should be really. People should start in my mind, if they're going to do Slimming World, they should really use it as a stepping stone to something else. They shouldn't be staying on it for life. It should be, how much do you want to lose before you go in there? It's like when you go in a boxing ring. You would go in a boxing ring with a... Um, I don't know, you, you if, if you were five foot four, you wouldn't go in with a six foot ten boxer. You know, with like super strength. You wouldn't do it. It's the same with the Slimming World. You wouldn't go in knowing, not knowing what you want to lose, not knowing. I ask people this, I say, what, how, you know, how much do you want to lose, realistically? And people say, oh, I want to lose five pounds. I'd like, I'd say, okay, go in there and you want to lose two or three. I've helped somebody doing this. I've helped somebody. I've helped somebody and they've done it. And they said to me, Stephen, if that's your secret, how come you didn't do it first? I'll tell you why I didn't do it first. Because I went in there thinking too big. I went in there with my stakes high. I was like, when I went to Slimming World, I was like, right, I'm gonna be eight, I'm gonna come out in a month, eight stone four. At the end of the year, I'm gonna be eight stone four. That was me. I read in the books, actually, that actually my size, I could be eight stone 10, I think safely that's not underweight for me but 
in Slimming World's terms, that's not underway. Where when really in reality, eight stone ten is. <laughs> it's uh, you know you can be a dangerously. There is some dangerous weights you can go to. In the book, it doesn't say real. We really, what you should do is go to your doctor and say, "What weight do you think I should go to?" They'll give you. They'll give you a, a medical. For me. I shouldn't be going anywhere lower than what I am now. But my body won't, my body will probably go to like a certain weight and it will stick there. Um, nine stone will be all right for me. If I don't go any lower than nine stone, I'll be all right. But blooming hell, it's like, it's like walking into a, it's like walking into a bookies and putting my money in the table going, Right, I'm going for this horse. It's going to win this week. And then next week, it loses. That's how I feel. I feel, right, I'm walking in there with all my, you know, all my stakes. I know what I'm going to do. And next week, I've lost it. But it's like, you know, gain it, you know, sometimes. Or I'll gain it, whatever. Sometimes, I think if my body's losing too quick, it'll pick up and it will go back on. And it's like, right, okay, it needs to slow down a bit. But that's good. That's good. It's like I've changed something. I've tweaked the routine a tad. I've um Messenger, Phil ring me. Messenger. Send a send an audio clip. Um You know, I've tweaked I've tweaked everything, I've tweaked how it is. But at least I'm not fifteen stand four. I've I tell you what. That is scary. That is scary. 15 stone four is, is scary. Four, you know, I don't want to be 13, 14 stone. I don't want to see it on the scale ever again. Ever. I can't lose that. Once, I, If I was 15 stone four now, there's no way I'd be able to lose it in the amount of time. That I've lost it. It would take me longer to lose it this time. It'd take me longer. Um, But you know, I've had to learn. I've had to learn the hard way, which is I don't want anybody to learn that way. Don't ever anybody ever. And I'm being serious. I ain't joking around. You see my pretend and play office videos. This is not a pretend and play office video. This is me talking as me now, right? This is me talking straight to you guys. You want to learn something, right? Learn this, right? When you go to your diet, and it's not been. Me, me having a rant or anything like I used to have in the old days, right? This is me talking straight, right? Think when you go, right? Think when you go away from this, when you go home, when you go away from this, right? When you go away from this video, think about this, right? Think I want to lose two pounds a week. How am I going to do it? What have I got in my cupboards? Don't binge all the stuff you got in the cupboards. It's not the way to do it, right? That's not the way at all. Because you'll need that as a lifeline. You, you know, you've got to have a treat. You've got to treat yourself. You've got to reward yourself. And that's another thing as well. Always reward yourself on the diet. Always reward yourself. Have, you know, times in the week where you've rewarded yourself. You've hit, you know, two pounds, a reward but not on that day. Think, right, okay, weigh-in day, maybe have a reward on weigh-in day, but don't go too mad. You know, you read about these people that go mad on weigh-in day, and they blow it. They blow the everything that they've worked for. You, you're working for something. If you've lost two pounds, man, keep it up. Um, when I, start, when I started losing in lockdown, I didn't see a biscuit or cake at all. And then as we came out the first lockdown, I started to see biscuits and cake then. Um, my taste for it, but it's like, I just think like the Poundland cookies, the Pound, the, with the Pound Bakery cookies, they're so good, but I tell you what, don't have to send you straight to the toilet. 
So, um, and my body was, was being introduced to, you know, cake. I can only have small quantities of it because if I have a big quantity, I'm on the toilet for the rest of the afternoon. Um, just to let you all know. So that's, that's something that you've got, I've got to take home. You've got to take that home because no diet's going to teach you the way your body's going to work, the way your body's going to react. You know, and it's like, I'm seeing this now as a bit of counselling. I would, I would say this, to, this is what I'd say to a counsellor, right? I'd say, I had a sugar addiction for goodness knows how many years. I was obsessed with food. I was obsessed with breakfast, with lunch, with tea. I was obsessed with that food. I was obsessed with it for ages. And I had to have food in me. I had to have any kind of food. I would eat it until I was full, over full, because I was never satisfied, never. I was never satisfied with the food. Even if it was just a bite of something, even if it was just a bite of a cookie or something, it, I was never satisfied with it, never. I had to have a whole pack of cookies to be satisfied. I had to have a whole, you know, I had to have a whole bar of chocolate. But now, if I have a whole bar of chocolate now, and this, ha this has happened, I'm talking the big bars, I'm not talking the little bars of chocolate. If I have a whole big bar of chocolate in, in one sitting, that's it. That's me on the toilet for the rest of the afternoon. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to gross you out. I'm saying this, you know, this is serious talk, guys. This is serious talk. Introduce, you know, introducing the foods back in, you know, leaving them out and then reintroducing them. You'll see a big difference. If you don't eat sweets for a few months and then bring them back in. I mean, there's a whole host of challenges you can give yourself. You know, like there's people that do the Stocktober and then they, they, they have a pint and it's like, it's, it's not what it used to be. I mean, my sleep schedule's changed. My sleep, my sleep schedule has changed because of my eating, because the foods I eat, because I haven't had the old foods. And, and, and chocolate is a bad, like it's, I'm not saying you shouldn't have it, but I'm saying like, there's so many bad things that it does to you. If you know, too much chocolate, it doesn't make you happy. It's actually depressing, it brings you straight back down. It pulls you, do you know what I mean? It's like, you have chocolate, it just brings you straight back down again. Um, anything with starch in as well, brings you straight back. Yeah, Andy just says, and it's like bread. They say like, like loads of bread and, yeah, I haven't cut bread out of my diet, but I'm just not eating it all the time. I think, you know, the times to eat bread. I read an article actually saying that the body shouldn't be having too much bread. Um, these are facts, you know, these are facts, you know, food, um, also fat storage as well. When you have something fatty, you've got to burn it off quick. If I was active, I'd be able to eat more sugar because the body needs it. Um, but I think I'd probably have a drink of Lucas Aid or something like that. Um, because, oh, the tiredness is kicking in. Um, because, that is the amount of sugar you need. Mm. You know, I think if you're like, if you're overactive, you would need more food, wouldn't you? You'd need to eat more. You'd need to, obviously, yeah, if, you, if I was burned off quickly, I'd have to have, I'd have to eat more. But then again, I don't want to eat more. I want to eat what I need, not what I want. If I had what I want, bloody hell. 
I'd be as, I'd be the size of a house. Um, I mean, I've seen pictures of me, fat, and I looked like an ape. I'm not. I'm not joking. I look like an ape. Um, I've seen those pictures. They are frightening, man. They are. They are frightening pictures. And I, I tell you, you can't function. No man can function. If you're overweight, there's no way you can function. You know, you you can't. Um, you know, you don't want to get up. You don't want to go to bed. When you do want to go to bed, it's too late. When you do want to get up, it's too late. When you... Uh, so much. You know, there's so many things you don't want to do. Um, yeah. This um, this jab's made me a bit restless. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk to you. I'm very sorry if this has gone over, but it's serious stuff. It's what I'm teaching people in videos to come. I want to make these videos to make people realize that, you know, uh, and if you like this video, you can go and subscribe to it, my channel. And uh, you can like and share. Like and share, please. Mic trigger. Mic lock. Finish recording.